Beautiful, I love it. Yeah. Which so is minus, minus one half. One half. So both of these equations are the same thing. Cool? Yeah. They're the same thing, just one of them simplified and the other one isn't. So if I plug a 3 into this one, I'll get the same thing if I plug a 3 into this one. Yeah. Right, because 3 times 3 is 9 fourths minus 2 fourths is still 7 fourths. Right? You get the same thing either way. So for me, I don't care if you stop there. That's fine. But you know, it's always good to know what to do when you don't have a net. If you're on a test, how do you check to make sure you got the right answer? Now you know. You just take a term, plug a 4 in, make sure 5 has comes out because that's the fourth term. Just pray to God you don't make a mistake. Check it. That would suck. All right, any other questions from homework? Okay. Uh, so a quick word. Um, what I'm thinking is going to happen is we're going to be in Chapter 4... This test two is going to just cover us up through section four three, the very first part, because I kind of turn four around. Because personally, I disagree with the way the book did it. So chapter four is all about other ways to do number systems. Right, our number system is based on ten. So the book starts off with other civilizations' number systems, where they have different symbols like Egyptian hieroglyphics and Roman numerals. I want to turn it around and start with 4, 3, where we use our own symbols, 4 and 3 and 2. We just change the base. What if we had been involved and we only had 8 fingers? Then our base would be 8. What the hell does that mean? So that's what we're going to talk about in section 4, 3. So after that test, we'll finish out chapter 4. I think it'll take us through April 6th. So whatever time we have left, we'll do all of chapter 8 and as far into 12 as we can get. We don't have to do all of 12. So we're going to cover 5, 9, 11, and then 3.4 through 3.6 for this exam? Uh, for the next exam, chapter 11, 9, 5, and 4.3. And I think the only thing I left off the last test was uh, the laws, right? Like the, the, what was on the quiz today? Fallacies and laws. And, and 11.2 uh, and 11.3 won't be in the test. Exactly. That's exactly. Right. So and the extra credit sections obviously won't be on the test. Unless it was on a bonus question. Yes, cool. Okay. Uh, 5.8 we're about to do right now. Cool. And 5.8, uh, I think I've talked about this a little bit before. Fibonacci sequence is silly on many levels. Uh, it's silly because it's just playing with numbers. And then it's silly because of all you can do with it. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about the Fibonacci number and Fibonacci with the golden ratio and what the hell that is, where you can see it. And then I'm going to ask you guys to do something for next time, which involves some internet access. So if you have trouble accessing the internet, not a big deal. Just do it if you can. Just nothing that I want you to turn in. I just want you to share it with me if you find something really cool. Because Fibonacci sequence has something to do with everything. It is silly. It has to do with the music that sounds good to us. It has to do with the art that looks good to us. It has to do with how uh, trees grow, how many branches they're going to have across, if you look across. It has to do with the proportions in our body. It has to do with the pyramids in Giza. It has to do with black holes. Holy shit. All right. So what I'm going to ask you to do, or we're going to do a little bit today, is Google Fibonacci space anything, <laughs> right? Put in their Fibonacci skateboard. There is somebody who has made a skateboard that's curved according to the Fibonacci sequence. Surfboards, there's people that do, uh, they create music. Some, most of the music sounds terrible because they're just trying to base it on the numbers. But if you make it out of the harmonies, out of the frequencies in the sequence, that's what sounds best to our ears, right? All right, so that's, a, that's kind of an expansive intro, but... Um, Here's what the Fibonacci sequence is. I, I think we've talked about just the numbers themselves. Who remembers how this thing works? Take the first term, add it to the next term. And get the yeah, so to get the third term, I add the two before it. So to get the fourth term, I add the two before it forever. So what would the next term be? Five, eight, eight. Right. 
This is section 5A. All right, now that could, you could sit down and you could say to yourself, okay, somebody was bored somewhere. Uh, they took the car in to get the tires changed, like I did this weekend. And they said, I'm bored, there's nothing to do, my phone's dead, can't play the games. One plus one is two plus two is three, that's the fun, yay. So, I mean, on one level, you look at that and you're like, okay, well, great, that's nice for these people, whatever. But, but go with me a little bit, let's take this a little bit further out, and you, you can see how this works. Why is it not bright to me? 21, 34, that's why. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. And then 55, 89, 144, I think, right? Uh, was that 2, 3, 3? How far are you going to go? How far are you going to go? That's, that's good right there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I obviously you could go forever. But, but I'm not going to. Yeah. So do me a favor. Uh, take a second and put in your calculator. What is uh, 21 divided by 13? Blah, 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 blah. Right? All right. What is uh, 55 divided by 34? 1.61764, blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. What's 89 divided by 55? 1.61818181818181. All right, and so forth. And if you keep going, if you go, keep going in the sequence, it's going to approach the same number always. It will always be that ratio. So this sort of becomes like a geometric sequence in a way. Because if you multiply three times this, you get almost that. But the further you go out, the more perfect it is. Somebody, what's 144 times 1.618, which is basically what this becomes? 232.992, which is approximately 233. Do you guys see what I'm saying? Yeah. So the thing to get from this is, if you keep going in the sequence out now, and you keep making that ratio, one thing divided by the one before it, you keep getting the same ratio, right? And this is what's called the golden ratio. And sometimes it's given the symbol, Greek symbol, phi. It's like a fat eye. An eye has got a big old belly. Okay, so that's the Greek symbol, phi. Um, the reason it's called golden ratio, why do you think it might be called the golden ratio? I don't want to hear anything too creative. <laughs> Way back in the day when people first discovered this, where do you think they might have thought this came from? Gold. No, God, <laughs> from God. right? From heaven. You know, so it's the golden ratio. It's kind of like it's been bestowed upon. You can almost see the sun rays coming down. So a lot of people, um, they see the golden ratio in, in things that we've built. Like they see it in, in the pyramids in Giza. They see it in the Parthenon. They see it in all these buildings. One place you can, and we'll talk about that here in a minute because it's a bit controversial. One place you can definitely see the golden ratio. Um, let me see, let me, let me uh, get you there a little bit. I've got to do a little bit of math. Um, cool, okay. Just to keep myself straight here. So if I have a rectangle. So yes, we're going to talk about the golden rectangle. Here. If I have a rectangle and I cut it somewhere, let me make sure I got you. So this is A and this is B. That's B. <coughs> got the wrong thing being a square, my bad. <coughs> so my picture is terrible. Oh, screw it, Jeff. Horrible. Sorry, guys. I'm kind of backwards. This is the guy that's supposed to be a square, right? So if you cut it so that you make a square, and the idea is the ratio of the lengths of the sides. Let me see if you guys kind of get this. If A plus B divided by A, so this side, this whole side length divided by that side, is the same thing as A to B. So like that side to this side. So you make those ratios so that that works out. And that is 1.618, which is 
what you've created is a golden rectangle. Right? My picture kind of sucks, but you can see on page 300. Let me try this again. So if you have a nice rectangle here to begin with, and you can cut it somewhere, that's better. There we go. So that this is a square. Right, that's A everywhere. And this guy, oops, you can do a chest. It's a rectangle. The original guy is a rectangle, a golden rectangle, and this new one right there, this is also a golden rectangle. Now, now stay with me. That by itself is not that amazing. So I'm just taking ratios of sides of a rectangle. The funny thing is they've done psychological studies where they've shown people pictures with that line drawn in different places. And people pick this one as being the most aesthetically pleasing. Or they show them pictures where, and this is a really terrible example. I really wish to God they would pick another one. But look on page 301. Can you guys see evidence of the golden ratio, the golden mm -hmm. rectangle in that art piece? Yeah. The shaded area to the right. Can you see kind of a line right there yeah. where the colors change? Mm -hmm. That line is actually drawn exactly to make this a golden rectangle. Yep. Isn't this in uh, people too? Like yes, people exactly. The ratio, in fact, on page uh, 300, and I thought about doing this, but I decided not to. But if you want to, you can certainly, because I didn't have enough measuring tapes to go around everywhere. But if you measure these, like if you measure the um, from your mid part, the torso, up to your top of your head, and divide it by, from your neck to the top of your head, you should get roughly 1.618. Now, now, that kind of leads us to an interesting thing about the golden ratio. One thing is it's amazing that we see it, right? We see it. In